Hello, my name is Cheryl Wilson and I wanted to do a quick video on something that I find um, a lot of fun and there's many ways to do this but I wanted to share my way. It is taking unprimed canvas and stretching it over wooden bars uh, to make an abstract painting and I love the roughness of a, a painting that when you turn it over shows the history of the artist actually stretching the canvas and the rawness of the way it looks when it's stapled. It's just something I love. So I thought I'd share with you how I make these. I give these as gifts to people because they're such a personal touch. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, I am going to do a demonstration of how I made this painting. I always wanted to know how to uh, make a painting with the um, canvas that I have um, actually put on the frame myself. So this was a uh, frame I had the canvas actually got ruined so this is very and i and i love the very rawness and the messiness of this um when i would buy paintings from other artists before i started painting myself i looked for canvases that were made by artists so i loved it so this is just a very raw demonstration but what this is is this is unprimed cotton and it came in a very large roll like 63 inch wide and then I cut pieces down when I am fixing a canvas that has been ripped or uh, torn I will use little pieces such as this and I'm have on my docket a demo to do for you all on how to prepare canvas but I wanted to show this um, because I actually love I mean this has got some texture on it and um, I used gesso for it to um, paint the back and then I used I love the rawness of it shown through so there's some areas that some of the raw canvas is actually coming through with a very light titanium white. So without further ado, I am going to show you how to um, put it on and um, do a very simple abstract painting. So first of all, I'm gonna take this off. Wedding, this is etched into eternity with our union we will move mountains we will live on our knees cause he have quite a bit of overlap so I could measure this and trim it. I'm gonna go ahead and just staple it. So how I do is I is I start at one side, and this is a small canvas, so I'm gonna use a very I'm just gonna use a simple. And at this point, I um, 
took the sound of the video down because the stapling sound was was kind of uh, uh, annoying so I didn't want you to have to hear me pound but what I'm doing is I'm I'm going to each side and going to one of the corners and stapling so that when I'm pulling the canvas taunt and you can see different places in the canvas where it may buckle in the middle so I'm I'm pulling it really taunt and then I'm um, adding the staple if you make a mistake you can take the staple out and redo but um, it's a pretty simple procedure if this was a larger canvas I would be using there's an actual tool that you can use to pull the canvas over but this is a small canvas so it's pretty easy to pull the canvas really taut and again I'm just going around and I'm just feeling the tautness of it pulling it as tight as I can without it buckling and then turning to another side and pulling it so it's kind of like an equal um, pulling of the canvas all around so that's what I'm doing here and I and I I have excess um, canvas hanging over but you know if it's not a lot I don't mind I love the rawness and um, when I had a outside studio and people came in and saw canvases of mine like this they really love the rawness of it looking uh, a bit messy so it all depends on your style as an artist how neat some people like a very neat everything very neatly done I am more of a there there you can see where I put it in and it didn't go in very straight so I took it out and did it again but I I like a roughness in my art I'm a messy abstract painter and I'm um, I just I like very spontaneous loose uh, messy type of um, work it's just the way I roll now the corners you can do it a couple ways you can um, fold it um, like over like like a like a bed I would say and on this one I've done different ways on this one I'm folding it by the like a like I do a present where I fold the middle down and then each side and there's like a little cute pocket on the end again this is preference you can um, uh, there's different ways that you can fold the sides so it depends on uh, you and some folds are neater than others um, some um, are a lot looser it's a it's a preference thing so um, practice a couple different folds on your corners and then you can see what it is that you like and the neatness of it and how it looks on the corner. So I have one more corner to do. I apologize for that being kind of up in the top, but the first one you can, you can see what I did. You can trim that or you can do that later. So now I've got a nice canvas here. Now, I like to start with a gesso spray. You can start with a raw canvas just the way it is. So I'm going to take a break and go outside and spray this. All right, so now I am going to do an abstract painting. Start a lot of times with either a light or a dark. So I'm going to actually start this with a white. And I love how this just 
goes on. Now this is a Golden's uh, Titanium White. And I'm going to mix in some um, Golden Fluid. And I'm going to some of my bottles are in pretty bad shape, so you'll see me play some games here. Um, I'm going to add some golden fluid, uh, and I'll tell you when I am adding the high flow. Now I'm going to add a little, this is the high flow, some titanium white, some magenta, this is the phalo, turquoise, turquoise, love, love, love that color. And of course, this is just a like a green, a yellow green. This is from Matisse. I'm gonna add that. And add some white. So let's see. Um, I like to roll my brush. I'm just very lightly rolling my brush. I want to grab a different size and go with some of the phthalo. Just right away adding some contrast in there. Okay. If I wanted to add some graphite, Graphite. Don't know if I'm going to use all those colors. This is, I'm going in with a round brush with some more of the white. What I'm looking for is some different shapes, different sizes. I am going to go in some of the, <clears throat> this is the turquoise, one was turquoise phalo, the other is, it's covered up, but it's like a, also like a turquoise. One's darker, the one's lighter. some of this yellow. So I'm going to choose a brush that is more deliberate. The There's a difference here on the brushes. Some, I mean the paint, some are heavy body and some are the high flow. So it makes a difference on how they go on and I like a mixture of both. I'm going to go light on this, so I'm just going to have a little bit down here and a little bit a couple places. I think I'm going to have a spray. I have not added 
right now I'm just basically deeming with my fingers, adding some contrast. With the um, pools, I've not added any warms in yet. Depends on what I want to do. Maybe have that drip a little bit the other way. So far, this is what we've got. Now oh, let's see. It's always daring to add your black in. I love adding touches of black. I'll give you my and this is a uh, the, uh, fluid, so it's very um, fluid. So I put a little on, take a little off. Alright, another of the colors I absolutely love and my bottle is a fresh bottle but normally I have this very messed up bottle is the high flow titanium white. While I'm opening that bottle of paint, I wanted to tell you real quickly about uh, a course that I have offered. It's called uh, Finding Your Artistic Voice, The Muse Within. And I go over so many things about what I'm telling you about, how I'm changing up this painting, and I even talk about um, the things I love sheet and how to record the things that um, help make you a better abstract painter in finding your artistic voice. I love white. That was an unexpected surprise. I love that. Love that unexpectedness. turning into a painting with a lot of the high flows. The other was more of the um, paint that was thicker, which is okay. It just depends on, and I'm squirting this right out of the bottle because it's, it's a nice full strength. We're going to let that dry and soak in. We, um, we need an area that has um, like a pop to it because I'm liking the, um, I'm liking what we have so far, but everything is about the same size. So I'm looking for something to give it like pizzazz. So I may when this is dry, go in and add a uh, stencil. Okay, my phone rang and then I did not videotape uh, two things. I did, with a palette knife, I added that big swatch of lime green right out of the Matisse bottle. And that was because I was looking for a large shape and that's what I felt was missing. So I just added the large shape with the palette knife, just put the paint on the palette knife and swiped it across the painting. 
and that took away from all the smaller shapes that I had and I did take a stencil with a really light blue and add two little spots but that's about it you can barely see those but the main thing was adding that very large green shape that is off center it's not in the middle of the painting it's off to the side and it just gave that extra thing I needed in the painting to give the eyes some interest it's also thicker because a lot of the other paints that I had on here were the high flow and they were melding into the painting so that extra thick uh, swatch of and I do that a lot uh, in my paintings I'll take a palette knife full of paint and just do a swipe across the painting and so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some of the white high flow the titanium white is a little bit transparent but I'm adding it around the edges to bring the eye into the middle it's not taking away the color on the edges because it is not totally opaque which means uh, covers it up but it kind of just cleans up some of the edges on this particular painting so I'm looking at it I'm enjoying uh, what I have I'm I'm loving the uh, balance between the colors of having light colors and darker colors to give the eye some place to go I'm loving having the black pops a little bit um, around the canvas. I'm loving having the flow of some of the paint and then that, that drastic uh, change of the swipe of the green. And these are all things that help change up a painting to give it interest. And of course, I'm adding in it things that I love, such as I'm always adding black and white in my paintings. I'm always adding lines of graphite. I'm almost always adding um, colors with uh, a palette knife. So these are some of the things that I put in all my paintings that I feel comfortable with. And so at this particular point, I hope you've enjoyed this process of taking a raw unprimed canvas piece, adding it to a wooden frame, and then painting a um, abstract on top. I've enjoyed doing this for you and thank you for stopping in.